frontal bone. The frontal bone is situated in the forehead region and is shaped like a shell. The anterior cranial fossa is largely contributed by the frontal bone. Parts. It consists of the following six parts. Squamous part, nasal part, two orbital plates, and two zygomatic processes. Squamous part. On each side, the lower part of the squamous part joins the orbital plate. The junction of these two forms the supraorbital margin. The squamous part presents with external and internal surfaces. The greater part of the external surface corresponds to the forehead. This part is bounded on each side by a prominent ridge that is continuous anteriorly with the upper border of the zygomatic process and posteriorly with the temporal lines. The part of the external surface behind this ridge and below the temporal lines forms part of the floor of the temporal fossa. The external surface above each supraorbital margin presents a curved elevation known as the superciliary arch. A rounded prominence between the medial ends of the two superciliary arches is known as the glabella. Above the superciliary arch, the external surface displays an elevation known as the frontal tuber or eminence. The supraorbital notch is a small groove situated on the superior and medial margin of the orbit. The internal surface is deeply concave and presents a median bony ridge called the frontal crest, which is continuous above with the sagittal sulcus. The foramen cecum lies at the lower end of the crest. Nasal part. This is the portion of bone which projects downwards between the right and left supraorbital margins. It presents a nasal notch which articulates inferiorly with the two nasal bones, one on each side of the median plane, and laterally on each side with the frontal process of the maxilla and lacrimal bone. Orbital plates. Each orbital plate is a triangular curved plate of bone extending horizontally backwards from the supraorbital margin. It forms most of the root of the orbit. The two orbital plates are separated from each other by a U-shaped ethmoidal notch for accommodating the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. In front of the notch lie two openings which open into the right and left frontal air sinuses. The anterior lateral part of the roof presents with a shallow depression, the lacrimal fossa, for the lacrimal gland. The anterior medial part of the roof bears a small depression, the trochlear fossa. The superior surface of the orbital plate forms the greater part of the floor of the anterior cranial fossa. Zygomatic processes. On each side, it extends downwards and laterally from the lateral end of the supraorbital margin. The zygomatic process joins the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. From the posterior margin of each zygomatic process, the temporal line curves upwards and backwards and splits into superior and inferior temporal lines. Articulations The frontal bone articulates posteriorly with the right and left bridal bones and with the greater wing of the sphenoid. Through its zygomatic process, it articulates with the zygomatic bone. The nasal part articulates with the nasal bones and with the frontal processes of the maxillae. The nasal spine meets the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. The orbital parts articulate with the greater and lesser wings of the sphenoid, with the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone and with the lacrimal bone of the corresponding side. Ossification The frontal bone ossifies in membrane. The primary centers appear one for each half of the frontal bone in the region of the frontal tuberosity. At birth, the frontal bone is made up of two halves separated by a median frontal suture. The union between the two halves begins at the second year and is usually completed by the end of the eighth year. The remains of the suture in the adult are often seen in the region of the glabella. This is termed as a metopic suture. A fracture of the orbital plate of the frontal bone leads to hemorrhage into the orbit. The hemorrhage acquires a triangular shape 
underneath the conjunctiva, with the apex towards the cornea and the base towards the orbital margin. The frontal squama is prone to fracture. In neonates and infants, it is a depressed fracture, whereas in adults, it is a fissured fracture, where the depressed area always shows as an irregular line of fracture at its periphery.